Oh, we can't play the rest of the song. Freaking YouTube will have my head. But anyway, guys, it is 12.08 and 65 degrees out. It's pretty nice right now. We're down here at the shop, and it's a friggin' mess. Uh, I had quite the friggin' night last night. I just decided I wanted to buy a bunch of friggin' iTunes songs and probably spent over about 15, maybe 20 bucks worth of songs. But, um, yeah, I gotta get a new uh, iPod. I've been kind of sort of putting it off, putting it off, but uh, I think it's time. <laughs> Can't even use the touch screen on it anymore. It's just so friggin' done. So we gotta... Gonna invest in one of those. They're only like 200 bucks now, which is freaking sweet. I really don't need it for the camera because I like to do a bunch of eBay stuff with it. So, but um, yeah, so I was out here pretty late last night again, and I ended up stripping out a bunch of Tecumseh motors and stuff like that. Um, there's freaking much an oil stub right there. You got the flywheel right there, stuff like that. And I also stripped out that dual output shaft motor. Uh, just mainly for scrap, I had a bunch of, I had, I think it was four, four or five motors just kicking around. Uh, they were all blowing up to pieces and stuff like that, so I decided to strip them all down. And I'm going to cash in the aluminum today for it when we go to the scrap yard. Because we got friggin' the scrap piles, uh, just about pretty getting full. <laughs> so we're going to cash that stuff in today. Uh, I also got to clean up the shop. Um... Right now on eBay, I'm watching this Honda motor. Same exact motor as this. I'm pretty curious to you know, see how much it goes for. It's at like 75 bucks right now. But I think those motors go for quite a bit, so I'm going to have to see how, see how much I can actually get for this motor. I mean, I have no freaking clue what a value of on this Honda. I mean, we got freaking Tecumseh motors, and we already know what the values of those are. Shit. <laughs> um, so yeah, I got to freaking clean the shop up, guys. It's just freaking a mess and a half. Um, we we'll get going outside. Oh yeah, so today what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be this video is kind of sort of be mainly for uh, vlogging life. Adam, he's having problems with the snowblower, so I'll give him a hand with it. Uh, we're gonna go go over a few types of different carburetors that are on these things. You got your regular smart carb, which is this one right here. Uh, if I can find a dumb carb, I can show you guys that as well. I think it's in this one, but I could be wrong. Let's see. Oh, I guess I don't. Oh, wait. Oh, there it is. I don't want the flywheel. And what is this? Oh, that's not a smart car. But I'll show you guys the different types of carburetors and stuff like that. Um, and we're going to show you guys how to clean them. And there's going to be three ways I'm going to show you how to clean them. Uh, the first one, I'm going to show you how to clean a uh, smart carb just like this one. This is a smart carb. Came off of an 8 horse Tecumseh. Um, I'm going to show you guys. The next one I'll show you guys is the dump carb on just a simple way to clean them. Uh, where's the dump carb? This one right here is a dump carb. This is an 8 horse Tecumseh. And you can tell it's a dump carb because the little separate jet right there is two different jets, not a single jet like uh, that one up in there where it's just flat. Um, and then I'm going to show you guys how to do a complete rebuild carburetor. Chem dip. We're going to stick a uh, Stick a carburetor in the chem dip, and we're gonna do a, show you guys to do a complete carb rebuild. And we'll be using um, the Tecumseh carb rebuild kits that I use. Like that, you get your little seat, your needle, your, uh, your little jet there, gasket, and your main bowl gasket. So I'll show you guys how to do that, and um, and we're gonna, we're gonna completely rebuild the. The, uh, the track driven carburetor that's on my 10 horse to come out here. Oh, I was just freaking. That was where the camera went all blurry there for a second, but um, there's the two tractors right there. TYT, but um, I'll show you guys what we're gonna do on. Um, we're gonna rebuild, fully rebuild my track driven craft in here with the 10 horse to come so. Got the friggin' tracks on it, 32 inch. Hell friggin' yeah. And this is a dumb carburetor, I do believe. Yep, dumb carb. So I'm gonna do these as well today. We're gonna do the full rebuild on that one. We're gonna do a half rebuild just cleaning on these two. These are two Arians ST5 uh, twos. And pretty much all the Tecumseh motors are the same, so these are the same parts. Um, Unlike this newer one, this is an Arians 
over here is an ST7, I do believe. And uh, this has a Briggs motor, so definitely a big difference there. So, but um, this first thing we're gonna do this one, we're gonna cash in the uh, scrap. That's for sure, we'll get lots of it. So we're gonna, there's a bunch of the cast aluminum, like freaking take a look at this hole. Like, how do you do that? Like, there's a freaking hole where the freaking cylinder is, you know? Like, you just, look at that one. What does this one look like? This one, oh, actually the block's still good on this one. But I do remember there's something wrong with this one. I don't know. But there's that one. There's a bunch of the crankshaft. You can't really save a crankshaft after when they blow up because of the, the scoring on it, you know what I'm saying? So... Oh yeah, we got a good little load going today. We got some even copper and brass. We got some copper, we got some brass. We're good to go. So, oh, we should do a cold start on the snowmobile. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> um, also, got to clean up the snowmobile trailer today. I keep on saying and saying that, but I got to really clean this out. Oh, this is channel sticker, but it's just friggin' packed. <laughs> We gotta get some of these boxes arranged, and look at it—it's just covering my 700. Son of a bitch. But um, yeah, someone left a comment yesterday saying if uh, if a police, if a police cop were to use this as a tractor, he'd pick this one because the freaking lights on it. <laughs> that was pretty funny, brother. I hear you on that one. Yeah, JB Weld actually held pretty good. Guess we could pull that off. I don't know if PJ will be coming today. I think he's not because we don't really have much work going on. Um, so we'll have to wait and see. So, no guarantees there. But um, that's pretty much where we're at. I'm gonna start cleaning up the shop. Then we gotta go to the scrap yard. Then I'll show you guys how to freaking do some carburetors. Yeah. Oh, we gotta get the TV running again. All right. So we just got back from the scrapyard. Friggin' figure out to bring my camera though. Holy shit, you should have seen this friggin' device that they had. It was like one of those uh those little mobility devices, like if you got like leg problems, and it's like kind of sort of a automatic wheelchair. And they had that friggin' sitting there, I should have grabbed it. But um I just I would wouldn't have known what to really do with it. It was kinda of sort of beaten up. Um can't find my slip, son of a bitch. But I was going to show you guys how much I got. Um, I do remember the prices, which is, I don't even know how I'm remembering it. But I got 90 bucks for all the regular steel. I think I got 18 for the cast aluminum. I got, no, 16 for the cast aluminum. 18 for the uh, brass. And I got 10 bucks for the copper. So that worked out pretty good. I got like a hundred and... 35 bucks, yeah, 135 bucks. And I went and got myself McDonald's. Yeah. So, this is what we're going on. We're getting this uh, Craftsman, the second uh, Track Plus system with a 10 horse, 32 inch Argo bucket. That's friggin' bigger than my friggin' hand. Oh, yep. Um, well, actually, any pretty much snowblow auger is bigger than your hand, but anyway, so this is gonna be the first one I'm gonna show you guys on how to do. And this one's getting the full blown rebuild. Uh, I want to finish just take. I'm pretty much I'm doing the screw right here, and this is just gonna make the carburetor fall right off. Um, I already went ahead and did the back bolt right there, so we're gonna fully rebuild this one because I want this one running mint tits in the winter. Um, don't want to lose that. And boom, there we have it. So all we have left is your vacuum line for the primer bulb, just unhook like that. And you also have your fuel line, which is right over there. Best tip that I've came across so far is take a pair of uh, vice grip roos right here and uh, open them up in just enough so they can fit onto the gas line hose. And pretty much just freaking go underneath here. And, nope, I'm gonna tighten them up just a little bit. A little bit more. Hey, come on. There we go. This isn't easy doing one hand. There we go. Nice and tight. Just like your mama's pussy. Alright, so we're going to take this. 
And we're gonna unhook the linkage right here. Just take note of where your linkages are. Stuff like that. So I'm gonna unhook this along with the fuel line. We'll get back to you. Okay, well it's off. That was pretty simple. Um, now all you gotta do is just unscrew um, just this main little bolt right here. And this is just a 7 16 bolt. Or jet, whatever you wanna call it. Unscrew that, and that's pretty much what we left with. That's your main little dirty old jet. And if that's not friggin' clean, well, it all acts up and it won't uh, run right. So we're gonna fully take apart this carburetor. I'm gonna just take off this gasket here. That's the friggin' bowl gasket. Then you wanna take out this little tiny pin right here. And that holds the float on. It's like pretty much like a hinge. Put that right there. Take out your float. There's the float. There's your needle right there. Oh, that's a little device right there. And now there's only one screw left. I'm gonna take off those two uh, screws right there. It's a quarter inch. And then you're gonna unscrew that main one right there. So I'll just take friggin' this little uh, handy dandy doodad thing. Yep, quarter inch. And I'm going to unscrew those and we'll bring it back. Alright, so once you're done taking that off, um, that's just your heater box cover housing piece that mounts everything. You want to take off your, uh, your other little jet right in here. That's another little jet you want to put off to the side. You can also use it to take out sometimes your old gasket. Like there's that one right there. And then there's another one. Kind of sew it in there. I'll have to use one of my picks. Right here, we use this little doodad Harbor Freight deal and just pretty much pick that one out and there's that. Come on, get off. And there's those two jets right, those are just a, it's pretty much just a wash and that's just a little piece of rubber piece. Um, and that was just in that little tiny hole right there. So what you want to do is there's also one last little, um, a little piece of rubber gasket and that's right in there which is your seat and you want to try and jab one of your little uh, pick things in there and take it out so I'm going to go ahead and do that alright so that right there is the old seat that pretty much um, seals this jet when it's inside um, this jet there when it's inside that little hole and just kind of seals it from keeping gas into it um, so this right here is pretty much all broken down and we're going to stick it right in the chem dip so it can free up all them little tiny jets that are in there like that one right down in there and that one right there so you want to make sure this is all cleaned up nice so we're going to put it in the chem dip which is a regular carburetor parts cleaner I'm on the verge of getting a new one because this thing's almost about eight months old and we're going to put it right in there so we're going to take the carburetor take the uh, bowl Next up, what you want to do is you want to take this little guy, put it in there, and for this right here, you want to take off uh, this little rubber gasket piece that's on the bottom here. If I can get it with one hand. Come on. There's that. And you want to unscrew that, so I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, those two little, um, this little washer and that little gasket right there, or in those and that little jet right there so you want to take that as out as well and we'll uh, put these two pieces in the parts cleaner as well so those two are in there we must well stick the float in it as well clean it off so we are going to reuse that it's a fairly new and plastic one I'm going to put this stuff right in the chem dip just like a so and we're going to let it sit there for about two hours and while that's doing that we're going to jump over to the uh, two Arians that we have sitting out back. So let's go ahead and do that. Alright, so we got in this Arians a few days ago. This is going to be a for sale item. Looking to pretty much sell for 250 bucks, Half decent. Nothing too special about it. You have to move it yourself. Um, we're going to do the carburetor on this one. Now Adam, vlogging life, this is pretty much what your carburetor is going to look like. Um, going to pretty much remove the heater box cover. Got your two screws down here. Yours might be a little bit far spaced out, a little bit different. Move those two sons of bitches right there. Then you have your top bolt. I already loosened it. Then you want to take off your choke knob.
take a key out and there we have it there removed is your heater box cover next you want to take a 38 I mean a 7 16 wrench underneath here for the same deal as the other one remove the uh, main jet get it loosened up enough so you can um, do it by hand. Oop, wait a minute, just figure out one little thing. Before you do it, make sure your fuel is off. And we're off now. Fuel shut off. You can also do like what I did on this one right here with the vice grips if you don't have the fuel shut off. I'm gonna try and get this thing underneath there just a little bit more. This one's just a little bit stuck underneath there. Should be loosened up now. There we go. Oh yeah, that's some nasty ass freaking gassy shit. It smells just like freaking stable. So I'll let that drain out. Take the jet out. If it comes out, blah, blah, blah. And boom, there's your jet right there. Put all that off to the side. There's the bowl. Fairly dirty. Nothing too special in there. And there's the float. Everything else is pretty much good. This is going to be pretty much a simple job. Nothing too special to it. We're going to take the carburetor, cleaner to it. The Walmart stuff. I like that because it's cheap. You know, I'm a cheap bastard. Let that soak. Give it a few sprays up in there. Let it soak. Do the same with the jet. Let it soak. Then you're going to come over to your air compressor. I know it's noisy, but we're going to fire it up, and we'll get back to you. All right, next you're going to take your pistol grip, uh, lower air blower, and I like to do this just to clean out all the jets and stuff. I like to just go right up into the main jet and really blow it out. Come back again with the carb cleaner, spray it, clean it off. Just clean the top off a little bit. Nothing too special. Spray a little bit in the curb. And spray it again. So do the same with the jet. Blow the jet out and clean your bowl and you should be all set to bolt everything back on. Okay, once everything is all cleaned up and you're ready to bolt everything back together, uh, what you want to do is you want to reset your jet and what you do is you screw it all the way in until the spring is completely compressed. The stupid thing would focus. And what you want to do is you want to turn out two and a half times, so try and remember where you were at. So I like to put it just like that, roughly. So the flat end is like that and turn it once, twice, and there's the half. So you're gonna put your carburetor bowl back on, put your jet back on. All right, one last thing I wanted to point out is when you were putting your uh, carburetor bowl on, uh, you have like a deep end and you have a low end. The, uh, the low end is gonna go right where your little hinge part is on your float. So you see how this is at an angle? My low end is gonna go right where that little hinge piece is. Just like that. So we're going to put this right up like this. Just kind of sort of get it up in there. And boom. It's in. Now you're going to take your jet. Screw it in. If I can find a hole. There it is. That friggin' bowl fell. i got to have two hands for this one. But you guys get the gist of it. And pretty much do the same. Okay. Once you're uh, done putting your jet on and your bowl on and your carb gasket on um, what you want to do next is you want to take out that screw right there which is another little jet take it out all the way come on there it is should be able to pretty much get it with one hand screw it definitely easy with two hands unscrew it I'm just going to start to clean that up a little bit. Nothing too special. If it's pitted, you definitely want to replace it because then it wouldn't be doing much. Just spray a little bit cleaner in there. Don't go too, too nuts with it. Um, 
it's pretty much let it sit in there nothing too special I mean you can blow it if you want I've never really had a problem blowing it um, pretty much all you gotta do is screw it back in and you do have to reset this one as well what you want to do is you want to go all the way in bring this one all the way in till it's snug then this time you want to go out two turns so there's one there's two just like that so if you did everything right you should have no problem firing up uh, the next thing you want to do is just friggin check your gas if it smells bad replace it like this gas is completely toast so we're gonna fucking get rid of it so we're gonna take uh, get a bowl I'm gonna drain the gas on this one all right, well, there's the gas out of the snowblower. Definitely is pretty dirty. Uh, went ahead and drained it. We can turn on the gas now. Uh, what you want to do is before you put your heater box cover on, is you want to um, you want to put some gas into it, fire it up, and then you can do your final adjustments before you do the uh, heater box cover. So we're going to do that real quick. Put some gas in it. All right, now that you got the gas in it, we're going to do a Cold start, cold start, or I've never actually even heard this thing start, so we'll do it that way. You want to make sure your choke is on, throttle this up, give it three primes, and we'll freaking fire this bastard up. Alright, so she stalled out, no big deal. It means we just gotta let it warm up a little bit. Probably still gotta get the gas through it. We'll see what happens again. Alright, so now that we've figured out the problem, we got to uh, do a little bit of a carb adjustment now. Um, what's going on? It's just dying out, so now we got to adjust the bottom screw until it's right. I'm um, just going to go either up or down, depending on what you need. Maybe more gas, maybe less gas. And if it, if this piece right here is going back and forth a bunch of times, back and forth, back and forth, it's going round, round, round. Um, that means you need to adjust this screw right here. You either need to go in or out, one of the two. So I'm going to adjust them, and then I'll show you how to adjust your idle next. Alright, there we have it. This carburetor is fully adjusted. I was adjusting the idle. Um, everything else is running pretty good now. So all we had to do is we just had to adjust a little screw down at the bottom there. We had to make it go down. We had to make this thing just go in just a tad. And we're all set now. So we can put the flywheel cover on it. I mean, not the flywheel, the heater box cover on it. And we'll be all set now. Alright, so I figured you guys are going to want to know how to change the oil too. I figured what the hell. I'm only going to take a second. Uh, due to the fact that this is, this is just only a 5 horse, um, not an 8, if it's an 8 horse, um, you're going to be using roughly about a 16 millimeter wrench, but this only takes a, what size is this, a 7 16 oil for this one, oil uh, drain bolt thingy, and we're going to unbolt that, and oh yeah, freaking puking out some oil now, and there's the uh, cap to that, I'll leave that up there, I usually like to undo the, uh, that while the oil is draining. Definitely want to run the machine before you uh, drain the oil. It just comes out a lot easier. Um, and there we go. I use the painter's tray just to uh, make it easier. Because sometimes on those bigger trays you just can't have that much room. So we're going to let this drain and come back to it in a second. Uh, what I like to do in the meanwhile is I usually take some uh, some gear oil and I usually just pretty much put a little gear oil on some of the parts that everything's going to get used on. It's pretty much like these tires right on like the axle of the tire. Put a little bit on it. On um, this bolt right there obviously. Put a little bit up on there, on there. And kind of sort of work it in. It's definitely a little bit dry so we're going to put a little more up on there. Look, 
better. A little bit on this bolt. Ooh, baby, this one's stuck. I have to get that in a second. I have two hands so I can hold it. But um, this is pretty much what we want to do. Just put a little grease on a little bit of everything. Uh, it doesn't hurt to put a little dab right on the top there. Right there. Stuff like that. Handlebars. If you guys have this type of model. I usually just put on everything that's going to get moved around. Uh, I usually do the augers too. The auger bushings and stuff like that. Just come in there and poop a little bit on there and you're pretty much all set to good to go. So we're gonna finish up the oil on this. If you guys want to know what kind of oil I use, uh, I usually just use the Walmart stuff. It's just five quarts, like 11 bucks, something like that. Just 10 W30. So yeah, but on my good machines, on my tractors, like my uh, Husqvarna right there, I use uh, Quaker State or something like that. So yeah. Okay, guys. Well, this machine is officially done. Um, there's the oil change, and I'll show you guys the old oil. It's looking pretty damn dirty. If you ask me, a little bit of liquidy too, but... Mm -hmm. So that's pretty dirty. Uh, this thing is all set, now we get the oil filled up. One thing I forgot to point out is when you do with the uh, gear oil and stuff, put, put a bunch of it right in this little, uh, little corner and all up in here and stuff like that. And it'll make it slide a lot easier. Um, and if you want to make your stuff slide and the chute a little bit better, spray a little bit of a uh, liquid wrench in there. Works out pretty good too. Just the silicone stuff. Uh, and that's about it. Definitely just makes everything easier, but this thing is officially done. Uh, it's ready for sale. It'll be on Craigslist probably tonight or something like that for 250 bucks. So, yeah. And then we're going to jump back up on that uh, big cross right there. I'll show you guys fully how to rebuild that carburetor. Before we uh, continue on the uh, Craftsman over here, um, the big one, I'm going to show you guys that smart carb that I was talking about. Um, these smart carbs are designed so that with it to be cleaned at all times. If not, then they'll just be revving high and low pretty much all day long. So um, I'm going to point out where the two jets are that you want to clean on these ones. And there's a hole right there. And there's also a little tiny hole up at the top which is right there and if you don't clean those um, they don't run right and there's also another little hole right down the center and if that's not clean then you won't be getting any fuel um, into the carburetor so you definitely want to make those, make sure those things are clean um, they're not like the older style where you can just friggin adjust and adjust them until they run um, these old, these new smart carb things these things have to run right and if they don't well you'll be fuck, tough luck pretty much um, so yeah, so I'm going to get to work on this carb right here, and we'll see how far we get. Alright, so, just got done uh, taking the carburetor right out of the uh, bucket of chem dip here, and uh, this thing freaking looks like a brand new carburetor. So good of a job this stuff really is. Um, it frees up all the jets, all the little governor linkages and stuff like that, and it just makes everything smoother. Um, I'm not quite exactly what sure of what's in that stuff, but I can tell you right now, it's uh, highly flammable. Don't ask how I know that. <laughs> um, but yeah, it does a great job. Cleans up the carb nice, all the jets are nice and clean. Um, stuff like that. So this thing's all set to be rebuilt. I'm first going to start off by um, putting the new needle and seat in. Uh, grab the little gasket kit right over here. And I don't have the part number for it. Um, although that might be a part number. It says 22-12263. Uh, I just buy this stuff off of eBay because it's a shitload cheaper than going down to uh, one of the power equipment places and stuff like that. So you don't want to lose any of this stuff. Um, so this, oops. so that right there is the little uh, seat. And I'm going to just stab this right into the little hole right in there. And uh, if you have like a, if you have gas getting into your oil in your carburetor, um, most of the time the seat is the problem. Um, I found that out the past few times now that I've been doing this, and it's usually the seat is just letting too much, um, too much gas in the carb. So and there we go.
in there. Yep, it's in there. Looks pretty damn good to me. I tell you what, it looked really good to me. Alright, so now we're going to stick the, um, the float on. What do I do with the float? Son of a bitch, my float's missing. Hmm. That's not good. Oh, I don't tell me we lost in the bucket of chem dip. Son of a bitch! I think it's in the bottom of the bucket of chem dip. Nope, maybe not. Mm -mm. Oh, there it is. It's hidden. It's hiding. There's the float right there. Uh, these are usually pretty cheap. You can buy these on eBay or wherever you, you want as well. I'm just going to use my uh, friggin' ear right now and just clean it. Actually, I can just use this rag. Just clean it off real quick. Nothing too special is going to happen. Whoa, you guys just fell, didn't you? That's pretty good. So, just put the float back together. I'm not going to change the uh, needle and seat because they both seem to appear to be in pretty good shape. Um, so all we got to do is just pretty much get them like this. Just like that. And we're going to put... Oop, lost it. Put it in pretty much like this. This isn't the easiest thing. I get sometimes pretty pissed off when I'm doing this because you just lose it on these things, you know what I'm saying? So you just want to pop that son of a bitch in there. Put the hinge piece in it. And boom. There you have it. Friggin' floats on. The uh, needle's on. The seat's in. So that's pretty sweet. We're going to use the... Uh, this is the old gasket. It's pretty worn out. I mean, yeah, it's got no life left in it. So we're going to replace it with a new gasket. That's just going to go on there like that. Wrap it around there. Come on. There it is. There it is. All nice on there. So, we get the gasket on there. And now we're going to take the uh, carburetor bowl, which is fairly clean now. Just give it a quick little wipe off right there. And we're going to put the bowl on now. Now, this is a better view of what I was talking about before. I'll clean off this so you guys can see a little better. Um, this is that shallow end, and the shallow end is going to go right where that little spring is in the uh, hinge there. So, you're going to put it on just like that. Pretty much just lift it on, make sure you get a good seal on there. So, now if that's on, you're going to take your, um, your jet and blow that out real good with the torpedo pistol there, which I already did. And you're going to take your pieces back together here. You're going to put your rubber little piece on. Actually, what am I saying? You need the brass little washer first. Then you need the rubber gasket piece. You can buy these new. I'm a cheap bastard, and I'm just going to reuse them. And you just thread it in there like that. Don't uh, cross thread it. Don't do anything like stupid like that. Um, and like I did before, half turn, you know, I'm going to do two full turns. So we're on now. We're going to do two full turns. So there's turn one. There's turn two. There's the half. Stab that son of a bitch in there like that. Oh, wait a minute. We need the uh, new gasket. Some new gasket piece that goes on there. Like that. Boom. And I'm going to screw it on. Like that. Now you're going to grab your other little jet that you put in the chem dip. This is the other little jet that goes right in the side. Right in there. In that little hole. Do the same deal. Brush a little wa brass washer piece on first. Then your rubber piece. And then you're going to screw it right in the hole. Come on. There it is. Screw it in. Oop, don't want to cross thread it. Yeah, 
this way. We're gonna have to go in there. Put the washer piece in first. See what happens. Get everything lined up here. There we go. Now let's put it back together. Something isn't lining up here. All right, I'm gonna pause this and figure it out because something's not right. Alright, so that was my fault. I got one of the gaskets mis mixed up. That was just my fault. But we're uh, going in now. Whoop! Freaking magnetic. Yeah. So that was pretty much my fault. I got one of the, uh, the gaskets mixed up. Might be. But we're gonna screw this son of a bitch in now. And we should be all set. Do the two turn, one turn. Two turn. Okay, so there you have it, guys. Fully rebuilt carburetor. This thing is all set now to be bolted back together and onto the machine. And we're gonna do just like pretty much what we're doing there. All right. Well, we got this friggin' uh, craftsman all buttoned up now. Pretty much the same deal as how we took it off. Two bolts, and you get the roll cable, and then just hook up your heater box cover with the kill switch. Um, but the thing of it is that I haven't quite figured out is why do people get rid of like nice freaking equipment like this like I don't get it this is like almost it's always been garage kept I mean there's not freaking a spot of rust on this thing um it's I mean it's a fucking 10 horse Tecumseh with a 32 inch auger bucket this thing's fucking massive guys and this 10 horse is probably equivalent to like a 15 horse Briggs right now uh the newer style Briggs you know what I'm saying like, I just don't get it why the people just freaking get rid of these things. But I'm not complaining. Then it ends up in my hands and I freaking get cool shit like this. So, I just got done hooking the throttle, the choke thing up. I gotta, gotta find me one of them uh, throttle cable, well, not cable, but little throttle knobs there, because uh, it is missing. So, yeah, so I had to uh, put these huge ass freaking washes on it too, because. Okay, somebody was uh, drilling out the old ones or something before, so I said, you know what, fuck that bullshit. Just freaking put my own shit on there. But uh, tomorrow we're going to do the old change on it, and I'm going to take it out right outside. I'm going to clean it up. It's a little bit late out right now, even though it's like 3.30, and that's what it looks like. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I'm going to well fire this up. Choke on, throttle up, see what happens. There you have it. Snow blow is done. It's awesome. We got two snow blows done today. And I showed you guys a little bit about the smart carbs, the dump carbs, and the dirty carbs. <laughs> so that's how you guys have it. I'm going to clean this up and we'll bring it outside and I'll show you guys what it looks like. And there we have it, guys. Good as new. Cleaned up really nice. I didn't think it was going to clean up this nice. Holy shit. No, it looks like a brand new machine. Oh yeah, really a lot cleaner. But um, there you guys go on how to uh, pretty much do some tune-ups on your snow blowers for the winter. Um, we got some more projects coming in later on in the week. We gotta, I got the Kawasaki out back. I gotta do some work on it. Parts don't come in till Thursday on a, on that and a few other little uh, machines we got going on, stuff like that. So there's uh, there's some information I guys can do some carb work and stuff like that um, hopefully it helps out Adam from vlogging life quite a bit and um, yeah this place is a fucking mess I gotta clean it up and uh, I gotta do an all the change on that so yeah but this thing is still unfucking believable how fucking massive this thing is 
This thing's almost like friggin' four of me. I'm just a friggin' little stick next to this thing. The friggin' logo is bigger than me. Holy shit. But, um, anyway, guys, until tomorrow, keep on, uh, chooching. Oh, wait a minute, we got the sweatshirt in the way, son of a bitch. There we go. Keep on, uh, chooching in the free world. Oh, yeah.